Moving on, new research has found that posts from 10 accounts on social media spreading disinformation and hate have been viewed more than 150 million times ahead of the general election. They contain anti-Semitism, conspiracy theories and even praise of Russian President Vladimir Putin. So let's speak to campaign lead Ava Lee now, who's from the uh, non-governmental organisation Global Witness, who conducted this study. Good morning to you, Ava. So I'm interested in this. Tell us a little bit more about the detail of your findings. Good morning. Um, it's great to be here. So I think we all know that the online debate around politics and particularly ahead of elections can be really toxic. Um, but I think when we go online, we believe that the views that we're seeing are really held by other people. Um, and what our investigation has shown is that potentially, you know, some of that's being influenced by actors who may be paying for these bots um, or bot-like accounts that are really pushing specific agendas. Uh, so we did a SNAP election, um, a SNAP investigation in relation to the SNAP investigation, the SNAP election. And we uh, have, looking very, very quickly, found this small number of bots that were posting huge, huge numbers of times. So we looked at some key issues that were coming up, particularly climate and migration, followed some hashtags and made sure that those were really politically neutral. So we looked at both Stop the Boats as well as Refugees Welcome. Um, and, and when we looked into those hashtags, we looked at the accounts that were tweeting most about them. Um, and we looked for red flags. So some of those red flags included tweeting hundreds and hundreds of times. Others included having um, a username that was a string of numbers rather than a real name uh, and images or no image for a profile picture, some images that looked kind of generated by AI or that we used elsewhere or, or where people just had that kind of position of an egg. Mm. Um, and what we found was really disturbing. It was really hateful content, really extreme Islamophobia, extreme anti-Semitism, extreme racism, extreme um, homophobia and transphobia, uh, as you mentioned. Um, and it was just getting viewed an enormous amount of time. So it's estimated that the just from these 10 accounts that they would have been seen over 150 million times in the last um, in the last few weeks. So this small handful of accounts is having a really outsized influence. Who, who, who are Global Witness, if you don't mind me asking? Who are you? Um, we're an NGO. We do investigations globally. We look um, at things related to climate change as well as impacts to democracy. And on behalf rights. of who? Sorry, yeah. Ava, but on, beha on behalf of who? Do you have a political allegiance? No, we have no political allegiance. We um, we get funded uh, really transparently. It's all available on our website. Um, we're always looking for more support if anyone would like to support us. Um, so we're totally politically neutral. And we did the investigation in a completely politically neutral way. And actually, the results that we found were politically neutral. We found these bots were supporting people across, um, across the political divide. We saw hashtags around Labour losing, which is one that's been used by Reform UK, as well as hashtags get the Tories out, which is one that's been traditionally and currently used a lot by the left. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's not an issue that is happening on one political side or another. It's across the board. And so your argument is what? That, that, that these bots, so people don't know what a bot is, it's basically a sort of uh, a phone that doesn't have a human being attached to it, but it's programmed to send out tweets on certain issues. I mean, this, this is... A problem, of course it is, around the world. And as you say, every political hue is, is playing these shenanigans. Some governments are even obviously doing this. Um, what do you want people to take from this? Um, well, I think it's really important that social media companies do a better job of cleaning up their platforms and making sure um, that what people are seeing is real and genuine. Um, you know, Twitter has a policy in place saying that it doesn't want this type of um, content that's being manipulated. And these accounts that appear to be bots look like they could well be doing that by the outsized influence they're having. So in terms of what, you know, I think your viewers should be doing, it's when you go online, like think before you you retweet that really hateful post um, and, and really read what you're seeing because you don't know if that's coming from, you know, your neighbour, someone real, or potentially it is a foreign, um, a foreign influence that's trying to spread division and hate across our society. I think that's dangerous all the time, but particularly as we're going to an election right now, and that's happening in the UK. We know it's happening in France right now. You, the US will be going to the polls in four months and more people around the world are going to the polls this year than ever before. Uh, just, just, just briefly, because we're under pressure on time. 
Do you make this information available to these media platforms who ought to know what's on them, but their argument may be there's so much they can't keep up with everything? Do, do you make it available to them? And if so, what is their reaction? Yeah, 100%. The first thing that we did was contact Twitter, or X as they're now called, um, with this list of accounts uh, and ask them to investigate them and to see what, uh, whether or not they are breaching their policies. We haven't heard anything back from X. Okay. All right. Thank you. Everything, doesn't it?